Hello. Just thought I'd do a short video about range and charging. I've done a few on this, but um, like a lot of EV owners, it's um, range and charging becomes a little bit of an obsession. And people haven't got EVs, um, and they think about EVs, they think about it a lot as well. Some details which don't seem to be um, hugely mentioned is things like... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll put the camera over there. Uh, on this screen here, which is very small. And I don't know why it's very small, because it's quite important. Uh, because at the moment, it's saying that the regen, that's the centre point. That dotted line is non-regen. That means you can't get that regen at the moment because the battery is cold. It'll only regen when the battery warms up. Also, it won't regen if the battery is over 80%. At the moment, it's about 50%. But it's because it's cold, it won't regen at the moment. This side of the screen, that's the power side. So even though the battery's cold, it's got almost well over three quarters of power, which is available to you even though the battery's cold, so it's it's pretty swift. Um, there's the screen as it is now, and as you can see, it's uh, it's got 50% um, of charge in it at the moment. And uh, it says things like, oh, I'll, I'll change it for you. Set limit. So you set the limit to, well, I've got it set to about 80, 85%. Um, so I'll leave it like that because it, it sort of states daily use because they don't want you to charge full up for full uh, for uh, daily use because it's not good for the battery to be fully charged. And as you're going on a trip, then you fully charge it and use the power straight off. Um, the only thing about range is that, um, uh, is when, um, you're on a high state of charge, you get no regen because um, the battery can't take more power. It can't take more power in. It's like if you go, oh, I'll put it this way if you've got a supercharger, after 80%, it's called throttling, the charging rate slows right down because the battery can't take the charge quickly after 80%. So the exact same thing happens when you regen, when you uh, take your foot to the throttle and you regen and the battery won't charge over 80%. So your regen is gone. So that's part of your economy has gone because uh, the regen is virtually disabled if you've got more than 80% or 80% or more in the battery. And again, the other way around, if you've got... 20% or less, the battery doesn't like that much either. It uh, doesn't want to charge. And um, it gets cold easier. It easily gets cold. So really, you could say, in an EV, the sweet spot is, well, 50%. It's between 30% and 80% is the car's sweet spot. That's when you get uh, your full regen and the full charging rate it's in its good it's in its good place so you get power regen everything there but that's between realistically 30 and 80 percent which is the sweet spot well if you go um if i charge at a supercharger and when i finish charging the supercharger the car is really full of go i mean it really is at full full tilt full power um, as it goes down below 50%, the power does drop off a little bit. But as the car's quick, you don't really don't notice it. I mean, I'll show you that now. You see the battery's cold because it's actually got a little snowflake on it. So the battery's cold. And as I say, the regen is a dotted line, which means there's very little, there's very little regen there because there's only that little bit of regen you've got. You'd hardly notice it. So the regen is virtually none. The um, the power is, as I say again, virtually full power, so that's fine. 
But it's something to watch out for is you don't get full power all the time. Um, but it's not the end of the world because car's quick anyway, but I say it's just quicker when you're near the top end. But if you're looking at the car to be in full is full flight, you're in a 50 mile, you're in a 50% area is the good bit between 30 and 80% is the sweet spot. And the, the other at each end is a bit of a downer. Um, these are just things that aren't, aren't generally mentioned. And one of my, um, one of my gripes about it is, is um, that line there, which is a really important line on this big screen. Why on earth is it so tiny? Oh my God, what on earth? That looks, I mean, that little dotted gray line is really important. I don't know, why is it so small? Does, does, do they not really want to, it's a bit, maybe it shows the car's weakness, I don't know, because um, it is a bit of a weakness. As I say, regen is, is not existing now at the moment until the battery gets a bit toasty and the uh and the what's it snowflake disappears um yeah it's just one of my gripes You've got this huge screen and really important details like that are so tiny it's like the uh, another thing is the uh, p r and d uh, yeah, i'll put it i'll stick it in reverse um that's a nice lovely screen they that is really tiny Park. and i don't know why some vital ingredients seem so small like some of the graphics are so tiny and yet the screen is big but uh, it's a lovely screen and some things i mean uh after two only got this car for two years so when this car goes back I would like a um, Model Y, but I may not be able to afford it. And then all I'll be looking for is a car, because some things I'll be looking for is I'd like the car to be able to perform as well as this one, which I won't get a car at this price, which performs as well. This car is in a class of its own. If you've never driven an electric car, Give yourself a treat or probably don't give yourself a treat because after you've driven an electric car, especially for a few days, you went back to your fossil car. You'd be absolutely disgusted with your fossil car because you imagine having full power all the time. Imagine having, even if you've got a nice BMW Mercedes or something and you're going along at 50 miles an hour, you floor the throttle. It's got to change. It'll change down gears before it even does anything. And this car, whatever it's got, is always there. And even low power uh, EVs, like my wife's got a uh, Kia Soul, which is relatively low power, only about 110 horsepower. This has got double that, even though this is the basic Tesla. It's quicker than most cars because what it's got is always there. And when um, the figures uh, line up and they say, oh, so the Kia Soul, 0 to, 0 to 60, 10 seconds, that's pretty slow. Well, actually, in reality, it's not that slow at all because as soon as you push that pedal down, every time you've got 0 to 60 in 10 seconds. It's always there. You haven't got to the, get the revs just right or get it all spooled up or sit in the line with the engine revving. It's just there. So that 10 seconds is quicker than most cars on the road. And this thing, which does not to 60 in about five and a half seconds, works quicker than, well, I must confess, I've actually got a Porsche Boxster as well, which is under covers. Um, it's really slow compared with this Tesla, really slow, because this, the only thing about the uh, Porsche Boxster is it appears to be fast because it's bloody noisy. So um, it sounds like it's fast, when actually it's not. This actually appears to be slow when you're leaving everything behind. Um, I mean, I go out, when I go out with my wife and she's go, I go out in the Porsche box, day, it's all a bit of a, ah, when um, you put your foot down and the engine screams and it's, it seems quite a scary event. But in this, 
she doesn't seem to mind, and yet it's actually accelerating faster than the uh, than the Porsche, but in a smooth, quiet, steady way. Plenty of grip, plenty of traction, because the motor, even though it's only two-wheel drive, it's all that down uh, weight under the floor, and it's rear-wheel drive. I know if I did get another car and I had to save money and I ended up getting a front-wheel drive, something like a um, uh, Kia, a new Kia Soul, a 64 kilowatt one, or a Kia Nero. Um, I know what I'd be. I know what happened all the time. Every time you pull away swiftly, the front wheels will spin. I mean, it's just the way it is. It's got shed loads of torque, which is always there. So front wheel drive. Any electric car with front wheel drive will spin the wheels, front wheels at the drop of a hat. It's because this one has got the motor in the right place, which is at the back. And the weight transfer is towards the back. This has got loads of traction, wet or dry. Um, yeah, so that's my thoughts for the day. So um, 50% is your sweet spot in the electric car. But don't be put off because it is uh, much, much better. And I, as I always say, range is everything. Because the claim range is not true. And the, the good part of any electric car is in a 50% area so the good part is half the range so all in all if you're looking for electric car to use all the time you better get some range look at the range forget cars with um i won't say the name of the cars because it's not be really fair but forget cars with with that that have got short range because in this day and age, it's not necessary. It's all down to size. And as a lot of people say, size is very important. So um, anyway, so that's my moment for the day. Don't forget, get an electric car, clean up the world, and um, get one with a long range. Long as range as you can afford. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.